Thanks for joining me again. Okay, so this is the troubleshooting section. Now, you're going to be using Flow for the next couple of years. So, uh, what we'll want to do is just take you through a few little issues that you may come across. So, let's get on with that. One thing that really, to coin a phrase, gets my goat um, is that whenever you buy a product, you find that you end up having to go and buy other parts because, you know, to make it fit your particular application. And so we have three particular areas here that I wanted to have a chat with you about. And they're parts that mainly are to do with uh, airlines and so on. The first one I'll take is quite easy. On the pipework that we're using. The, the 636 comes with a the 10 millimeter is for your airline coming out of the top. Okay, that's going to be standard anytime. This particular pipe fitting is for 12 millimeter, semi rigid they call it, pipework. And it's just push fit and that's it. It's, it's in there. Pull the tabs back and take it out again. Now, as I said in the what's in the box earlier on, that Sometimes you, um, and, and on a rare occasion, you get this particular pipework. Um, and what you'll find is, is that you have these little barbed connectors. And what that does is you soak this little bit of pipe uh, in, in hot water, make it soft, and then fit that barb into it. Now, it has to fit you know, to the point where you couldn't get that in um, on, on your own. If you find that the pipe that you have is too big, and, and that really and truly your that barb is very very loose in there instead of struggling with it um, and using jubilee clips and things like that to try and make a seal don't what we can do is we can give you a larger type of barb okay so all we would ask you to do and it's going to be the same thing for all of these we would ask you to take these four particular barbs go to the website that i'm showing you at the bottom here and you'll see the returns procedure and what you would do is you would just send us these barbs but Unfortunately, we can't pay the postage, so we would need you to uh, send us a self-addressed envelope with postage paid on it. And if you send these to us with a little note saying exactly what the problem is and the kind of result that you would like from it, what we will be able to do is exchange these for you free of charge, free of charge. We just want to make sure that you have a system that is up and running. Now, that brings us on to the second one. You have these particular connections here which is your T, and as I explained to you earlier on, you have a non-return valve. I'm not really gonna get into what they do just at the moment because that's in other parts of the DVD. Nevertheless, they are, as I said, they are designed for 12 millimeter. Okay, again, what you find with a lot of boats, different types of marine vessels out there, is that they don't use 12 millimeter pipework. In fact, there are other vehicles that don't use it either. So again, what we've said is, Sometimes you'll find that it's this, it's gonna be copper domestic 15 millimeter or the gray or white Hepworth pipe. Um, and clearly, obviously that's not going to fit. However, we do have T's and non-return valves uh, for those, those particular sizes. What you'll find is with this particular non-return valve, the idea is to make flow as convenient as possible. So when we fit in this non-return valve, all we expect to do is to drain the water heater and, and all you have to do is switch on the box uh, and take two minutes to drain your entire property. And that's because of this. It makes it more automated. You may find that if you have an RV or a boat that is drawing water from a fresh water tank, that the tank is situated away back here or it is underslung on the property. But the pipe will emerge somewhere to join into the main system. If you feel that for some reason that you would like to get the water from this point of fitting the T and the non-return valve here, all of this removed, that's fine. You can't blow back the other way using the non-return valve, but what you can do is you can use this shut off valve instead. And this is a manual device. So you basically close it off whenever you want to do a drain down to blow that direction. Uh, and in everyday use, you leave it open. And, and it allows your water to use. So it's, it's one extra step. You close the valve to do a drain down and then you switch on the box and you do your drain down, that's it. When you do your drain down, the last thing that you would do is open this drain valve. But what it can do is it can shoot that water back into the tank, into the barrel, and you can drain that just um, following you know your own instructions anyway. The point being is that in that particular example, this non-return valve, 
really is of no use to you and they're quite expensive as are these okay so they're in fact they're about the same sort of price so again but send it back to us self-addressed envelope it's following the same um, idea and what we can do is we can replace it with this okay i just want to show you something else here this happens quite often where the place for to fit the flow connection is something like this and you realize that you've got maybe a, a connector at one end and you have a connector uh, at another and a very short space in between now you're never going to get any particular part fitted in there what we would often recommend to people is that would be just a modification to it this would be your straight through connection okay so by simply just adding a couple of elbows okay what you're able to do is extend the pipework down here back around and then back up through and of course you've got your non-return valve in here and then you've got your place for your tea so you can very simply don't be afraid to do this you can very simply just create something that is quite small and with just a little bit of imagination you can turn it into something a little larger and the beauty of these push fit connections is that you are usually able to push them up out of the way against the wall uh, and you've got your pipe leading out so Now an issue that comes up from time to time when customers are trying to carry out a drain down, they know that they need to close off all the taps and outlets and they know that they also need to dump all of the water out of the water heater and then to close the dump valve again and what that does is it creates a seal system in which we can build up um, air pressure. Now what happens is, is that when they connect on with our portable products, they connect on a, a compressor and they switch it on, the compressor seems to run indefinitely, it just doesn't stop. Same thing can happen with the uh, integrated product as well. A lot of engineers, especially for RVs and for uh, uh, touring caravans, find the same thing. They get asked this question because customers find that there is water running out of the bottom of the actual property and it is you know, running down the driveway. And the problem is actually with the dump valve. Sometimes the dump valves can get a little bit sticky or they haven't been closed correctly. So rather than tell you any more about it, what I wanted to do is get down and actually show you uh, what's going on. Okay, so this is the dump valve for the water heater. <clears throat> now what you'll find is to open it, as you I'm sure already know, you just open it uh, directly in the vertical position. However, what a lot of people tend to do is they use their thumb and forefinger to actually close that valve off again. Unfortunately, what it can do is it can actually stick. Now watch what happens whenever I press a little bit further down here. That hinge comes up out of the, the this particular unit again, as you can see, right? And what happens is sometimes when you lever that down, um, it it's, it comes down too far and it keeps this hinge up, and that actually opens the valve again. So, uh, what you should actually be is the recommendation from the manufacturers is instead of using the thumb and forefinger, just simply push it down like that, and that should close it off. Now. Even at that, sometimes these get a little bit sticky, okay? And this is why a lot of engineers um, get phone calls to say the water is dripping um, outside. Um, so what you can do is, if it does do that and you find that flow is just continuing on and on and on, or your compressors keep going, or you are getting a drip, just pull that up a little fraction, just what we would call up a hair, um, and that should be enough to close that off. Next is the air side. Now, what you'll find in here, and I'll just set this little rig back on, that you have, so that you can see, what we've done is, now you would have four meters of pipework, but it's a demonstration. So you have your little elbow here. The easiest thing to check is check from the box forward. Now what can happen? The main thing can be that flow continues to compress. Now flow, to build a system at the start should really only take about 30 seconds, um, not maybe not even. Um, if you find that it's been going for a minute to a minute and a half, switch it off. You'll just overheat it. Um, it doesn't need to be going for that amount of time. Okay, so we've got a bit of an issue. And the first thing we want to do is obviously work our way back here. Now, before doing that, just make sure that your uh, uh, taps are all in the closed position, that you have your dump valve on the water heater has been dumped 
and then remember to not lever the little yellow dump valve down with your finger and fourth finger. It's meant to be flicked into the down position and that will close it. If you push it too far, the hinge will come up out of the floor and that will slightly open. If that is happening, again, what you can do is flow is on. Just lift that little uh, dump valve, just a little fraction, a little hair, and that may be enough just to close it off. What you want to do is, if your toilet as well is connected to the main water supply and it's drawing toilet and you don't manually fill the toilet supply and it's, and it's drawing from the main, what you want to do is, is go to the toilet whilst it's going and listen and 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 listen for uh, an air leak you will hear it um, even though flow is under the seats and so on if you put your ear right down to it you will hear it same thing goes for the taps same thing goes for the shower if you have an outside shower you might want to check that as well just to make sure that you know there's no air leaks or something is lying in the open position okay so check all of those first of all takes us back to the box the easiest way to check if flow is building up to its 15 psi and then stopping and restarting again is simply to hold take this connection off this little straight or elbow and just simply use your finger over the end of it so I'm going to do it it'll be a bit loud but I'll just we'll check it here putting my finger over that it is built up to 15 psi very very quickly if I let go again it, that's the equivalent of you opening a tap and, and, and obviously that's it building up to 15 PSI stopping and then opening and tap, it will sense a half a PSI drop and it will start again. Okay. All right, so we've demonstrated that enough. So if that's working, then it means that you have got air, that the, the box is functioning correctly. So what we want to do, and you've checked all of your taps, you've checked everything else, there's no air leaks, and especially that little dump valve on the, on the water heater, what we then want to do is check our airline. And basically these are all push fit connections. So you simply want to really just connect it back up. And what you can do here is you can go down to the T. Now, and just to explain, this would be, for example, uh, in the position that I'm sitting in a caravan, for example, what that would be is your non-return valve. That is your outside plug. That's where your water supply is coming in. Or that is your tank, your onboard tank right there. You've got your non-return valve. And what that does is, again, it stops the air traveling it to the left. It can't get through this way um, because it will obviously escape outside. But it, you want it to go this way towards the taps. Now, what you can do the easiest way, again, is just disconnect the T off the end there and again check it. If you can stop it then it's okay it's building up in pressure. You can actually take this little T apart. Now you'll see the red band there and um, there's a little if you were to just grip it. Now just in case something has happened and the non-return valve has jammed in the in the closed position and it's not allowing it's it's not going to happen because it's basically a, a push, trying to push a door in the wrong direction um, but you can you know you can put your hand over it and and make sure that that stops okay it's just hard for me to get a seal there but i'm just showing you that you can take these pieces apart the tea itself is just a standard tea then of course then you could take the uh, non-return valve off here and if I connect this up I'm going to have to, to create a seal system and I switch it on. What I do need to do is make sure I put my finger over this end. Okay. Now the one thing you want to do, as you can see, if I put my finger over both of those ends, what you'll find is that air is able to escape going through the non-return valve okay there's a problem and it's the non-return valve what has happened is the non-return valve when it was fitted is pointing in the wrong direction there is an arrow there the arrow needs to be pointing towards your taps with the back of the arrow facing towards uh, obviously the outside wall so what you want to do is take the non-return valve off the other way okay make sure your arrow in this instance is facing towards me okay and then there's your connection to the outside wall now let's try this there you go so as you can see the non-return valve is operating correctly and that is just enough to keep if it is in the wrong position or the wrong way around and um, what it's doing is pushing against the door um, however that door will just swing open the other direction to allow that water to come through so that's it in operation so as you see it can be just as simple as that so this is just a little checklist of things that you want to try out
So in fitting flow, I was showing you how to blow down through the tube to check whether or not air would come out of this particular socket. And it's to tell you if there is actually a check valve built into the actual socket itself. Now there is something I just want to show you here. If I were to go inside this particular caravan as it is at the moment and I were to blow down through here, what I would actually find is that there would indeed be a, a check valve to my mind. I wouldn't be able to blow through that. But there is, as much as there is a check valve in here of sorts, um, if I were to plug the water socket in like that, what it will do is it will actually open the valve that is built into this particular socket. So whenever I go to blow down through there, I can actually blow through and into this particular tank. So what you want to make sure is that if you are going to uh, say if you need to fit the check valve that is supplied with flow what you want to do is come outside and actually plug this in because you may try to drain down sometimes and and you've forgotten to disconnect this particular barrel and by doing that flow will just continue and continue and continue to build up try to build up pressure but it, that pressure is being lost through this particular hole if that is the case to take away any sense of doubt, what you should just basically do is fit the non-return valve inside and then you can just forget about it. Okay, so if flow does happen to misbehave, there are two particular areas we need to look at. The first is the power supply, the DC uh, battery power supply that's leading to flow, and that would mean that maybe you're not getting power to flow. Um, the other is the air supply that flow is continuing to, to churn over and, and build up pressure. Um, so what I want to do is concentrate on the electrics. This is just a little rig that I've made up, first of all. Now, if you're not getting power to flow and you use the on switch and you're not getting power through to it, um, as you know, we've given you this little T which you can plug in. The first thing I would check is the main breaker fuse. This is the fuse that is used to go from the link from the battery through the connections and straight on up to the consumer unit and obviously powers everything else that is battery driven. And what we're going to do with this little T obviously, and it's in the, the uh, layout section, is, is to piggyback off of that. So what I would do first of all is just check the main fuse. Now, to check it, really just check that you're getting power into other areas, the pump, the lights and so on, things that are driven by 12 volt. If they're working, then you know that this fuse is okay. So, what you want to do is then just check the connections, you know, push them in, make sure they're, they're seated. You can take them apart and reseat them. Now keep the box in the on position uh, because if there is a loose connection, it'll spring into life for you, okay? And you'll know where the issue is. Now, check this connection down here. As you know, this is the part that connects into flow itself. So just make sure, take them apart, reseat them, and again, make sure that you check those. Now, what we want to do then is, now I've just set up this little rig here just to give us a DC power. Check your connections again where the T actually joins on there. Again, reseat them. Then move up the line and go to this little fuse. This is the breaker fuse for flow itself. It's a 15 amp fuse. If you were to take it out, you can see in there there's a little loop and you can see if that's broken or not. And, and as I say, it's a 15 amp uh, mini fuse there. Okay, moving on up the line, what you have is this four meter supply. What you may have somewhere is this little inline switch fitted. And I suggest you put that in there because it just means that you only have to open a little cupboard and the switch would be at the side and so on. However, what you're gonna do is cut one of the lines and you're gonna crimp that. And again, I've covered it in an earlier chapter. But what you need to do is just basically, again, jiggle the lines that are going into it and see if the switch is actually operating. Um, so you wanna flick it on, flick it off, work with the wire, see if there's a loose connection because what you may have is this little crimp that's used for uh, you would use a set of pliers and, and, and you would crimp that, so uh, just make sure that that is not loose. So we've got our connections, we've gone through our fuse, and then just check the main connection into here itself. If you still find that you're not getting power coming on, then what you're going to want to do is to send that back to us, okay? Don't feel that you, you want to open this box. There is warranty void stickers on the back and you will void your, your five year warranty. So don't open it. Our fear is obviously that it is an electrical device and we don't want electrocution. And if you're working at it, you could actually fuse other parts and just make the problem worse. Simply just send it back. It has a five year warranty on it. Make sure you register in your serial number uh, onto, our, onto our website. Um, but you have a five year warranty, send it back. We'll, uh, we'll fix it or replace it and get it back to you.
Okay, so that was a good example of getting the T for flow fitted to quite a straightforward uh, infrastructure. Um, I did say that we would be uh, going to fit to something a little more complicated, and this is one we have here. As you can see, our good old Northern Irish summer weather has caught up with us, but that doesn't bother us. Not for the fitting of flow, because we're all inside in the warm, but also then for draining down as well. Everything is done from the inside, which is great. Now, just to show you on the board here, just back to your structure, as you can see your water inlet comes in from here you may or may not have a pump in place and of course next to that would be a filter now just to show you the last time we had just a simple structure coming in from the wall this time what we may have is two particular structures coming through one would be coming in from the wall which will have your little barrel outside and then the connection into there and the second of course would be a tank itself. Now the tank would, would obviously draw its water up to here, to this point here, to where you would have a diversion switch, okay? And basically it's a lever. You turn the lever to whichever direction you want the water to come from. It could be coming from the barrel outside or indeed the tank. Now, different properties are getting more sophisticated as the years go on. And what you might find is that this is actually a solenoid valve, an electronic valve that is operated from a control panel. You switch where you want the water to come from, be it the outside or be it from the tank itself. Okay, so this is where the water is coming from. What I thought I would do is actually show you physically how that structure actually looks. Okay, so we're down in the bowels of the system. Everything's a little bit cramped, but cozy. Just to want to show you the structure here itself. Now, I know it all looks very complicated at the moment, but actually just let me explain it a wee second. Hopefully it should become a bit more clear. What happens is if I reach across the top here, you will see that there is a pipe leading into the water tank. This is the fresh water tank that you can draw from to the, to the taps. Now, it comes in from the wall. You can actually see it coming in from the wall through there and it fills up. I did say to you that there is a vent which comes out of the water tank and goes down into the floor. Now it operates for two reasons. One, if you were to overflow the tank and put too much into it, it's going to run out of this pipe and down through the floor. And plus, if you're drawing water from it, it would create a vacuum. So obviously there's air allowed to come back into the tank here and replace the water that, that you're taking out. Now, down below, what I'm more interested in is how do we get the water into the main system itself? Well, we have our pump here, okay, an onboard pump. Moving down below, the water itself coming from the tank comes from this junction here. You can see it's coming from the tank straight into this T. And then it goes off to the left. Just before I go that way, it also goes to the right to this dump valve. And when I want to dump the water out of that tank, I can open that up and I can get rid of that water. On the other end of this is a little red stop end. And it's just the end of the line. Okay, so the water comes out of the tank, comes along here, comes up through and into this particular diversion switch. Now, at the moment, the diversion switch is not set to take water from the tank. If I turn it to here, that means the water will travel up through, goes through, the pump is drawn from the, the pump will draw it from the tank, and then it goes off to the rest of the water system, out to the right here, that's going through to the cold. This part here is running off through this dump valve, and if you listen, that's actually the dump valve for the water heater right beside. Okay, so the cold water goes into the water heater where it is heated, and then <coughs> it goes to the rest of the water system as hot water pipes, that'll be the red pipes. Now, also what you'll see in here is this particular longer pipe coming from here, and it's coming from the back wall there as well, and that's where you would push in the little connector from the barrel outside, comes through into here, and what you would have to do is turn the diversion switch, and it would take it, and it goes through again through the pump and onto the rest of the water system. Okay, so what I want to know is a few facts about the system. First of all, where the non-return valves are. There may be a non-return valve at the tank. I don't think there is. There may be one in the block that's in the wall that we discussed earlier on. So the easiest way for me to do that, to find out, is, is simply to blow down through the pipe. Now, obviously, we'll need to have that diversion switch in the right direction. So what I can do, this longer blue pipe here, which connects in, okay, what I can do is just simply connect on a little rig that I've created okay which is just this long pipe with a connector okay and if I try to blow down through that okay and I'm not able to blow down through that so what that is in fact telling me is that I've got 
a non-return valve, a one-way traffic valve along at the far end of this particular pipe, okay? And that's not allowing me to blow outside the wall. Now, if I connect up that end, it means I wouldn't have to use the non-return valve. Let's have a look on the other hand at this part here at the bottom. This is the pipe coming from the tank itself. Let me just come to this one, which should be a bit more straightforward. There we go. And what I can do is I can connect onto here as well and I can blow down through there. Let's see. I'm sure you can hear it on my mic that I'm able to blow quite easily through that system. Now, I'm either blowing into the tank, which I would assume is happening because this dump valve is currently closed. I'm blowing into the tank and indeed then I'm blowing out of the vent here and this is why I say this is so important when it comes to tanks in either caravans like this, touring caravans like this or indeed RVs that are using an onboard tank because you will have this vent and indeed boats exactly the same way. Okay so having been down having a look around there at the structure uh, what can we tell from this? Well basically by blowing down through the pipe we can tell that um, the pipe leading to the barrel outside has got a non-return valve in it uh, as you can see with the X here and what we can also tell is when we try to blow into the tank we were able to do that no problem so we end up with this little uh, green tick for, for go. Now I've got the structure here in front of me now just again to explain what's going on okay this part here is drawing the water in from the tank okay and when the lever is in the downward position it actually goes up through here and it pushes through to the rest of the system so this is the start of the rest of the system this is the start here obviously and this is our diversion what we can also see is that we've got this longer pipe coming from over here which if we have the lever in the side position it's going to draw that water through now you may come across in, in your own property a time whenever you have this as an electronic valve a solenoid valve um, and what that will do is from a, a switch on the control panel you can switch it from one to the other nevertheless this is the start of our particular uh, the rest of the water system so it kind of makes sense that what we can do is we can basically cut this particular part out of the equation and we could put in the non-return valve here beside and we could also put in the T. The only problem with this is is that in actual fact there isn't enough space if you look at the picture isn't enough space to get this uh, in here. Now the reason why I've taken this out and the reason why I'm going to show you it is because I want you to see that you can actually modify the pipework as long as you know uh, what you're doing you have a clear picture of what's going on. Now what I would have to do is actually in this particular example is move this diversion switch around the corner so that I can make space extra pipe for my piece. Now that, that can be done quite straightforward. So what have we got? Well we've got a pipe um, leading out to the wall itself. If I turn this uh, around here this is a right angle bend so what I would simply do there is I would take that off and I would just put a straight connection onto there. So at least we're heading in the right direction. Okay, so what I need to come around the corner and so on the lower part what I can do to connect up to my pump is I can simply just remove this part and place this instead and that is coming from the actual coming from the tank drawing in water okay it's going to come along it's going to come up and then it wants to go to the rest of our system and then of course we can indeed fit the non-return valve and 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 the tea itself okay now that means that we have made enough space and don't be afraid to do this yourself um you know to to be able to get a couple of pieces of pipe a couple of straights and a couple of uh elbow connections you'll just get them from any caravan store okay so we know that we can modify our pipe work and sometimes we may need to do that um as i say every particular layout is different so it does take that little bit of ingenuity and, and imagination now i've put this little rig back together again the way it was and again we're going to have a look and use a bit of that ingenuity and see what is the best place to put the tea. Now as I said to you before kind of the obvious place would be to put it here and if I mark just on the board here that would be you know to fit the tea at this stage here okay and what that would mean of course the non-return valve because if I were to uh, fit on here without a non-return valve what's going to happen is that the air is going to escape through the tank because of the green tick as you can see it's a clear airway and it's going to escape out of the vent okay it's not going to escape out of into the, the barrel outside simply because and um, we have a check valve in there and so it kind of nearly screams to be obvious to put it in here and fit the T and the non-return valve however what that's going to do 
is by fitting the T and the non-return valve at this point here, what it's going to mean is, is that it will take all of the water from this point and, and get rid of it, but it's going to leave this water in here that could be still vulnerable. Now, there's a judgment call here. If the water, I know that this lower pipe, let me just remove this out of the way, I know that this little pipe here is coming from the dump valve. Um, for the water tank itself. Now it's only a short piece of pipe and you could make a judgment call and say well look okay it's only a little bit of water that's fine as a matter of fact if I open up the dump valve that may trickle back in there. Okay but it does leave this longer piece leading to the wall. Now one thing that could happen is it could freeze obviously uh, in the pipe because we're only taken from this point forward. It could freeze in the pipe and it could blow off this joint but more than that as well, this water in here is going to sit for a long period of time, perhaps over winter or between uses that you actually use your property and it's going to go off. And, and, and obviously this is just one piece of pipe, your structure may have a longer piece and so on. So that's really not what we're about. Let's have a look at the diagram here again and see well, what could we do. Let's just take this out of here. So we've got our water through here. It seems to me that it's quite, almost quite obvious that a place that we could put, and in fact, we don't even have to use the, the one-way valve that we supply with you, but what we could do is we could fit the flow T onto here, okay? And as I say, we then have the connection to the flow box, okay? Which connects down into here, okay? Now, what, what does that mean? Well, whenever we're connected up, what we can do is using this particular rig again, that would mean that we have the T, that was just a straight connector. We don't need the one-way valve because it's got a, an X there, it's already got one in place. So we just need to connect the T and because that's 12 mil, the same as the connection that was there, we can just put that straight onto the spigot to the wall, which means straight from the very source of the water, we can clear this particular pipe. So we can clear this pipe down into here and if we have our diversion switch in this direction, it will come down through this pipe, the air, and it will push that water on through the system. Okay, what about down below? Well, when it's in this position, it won't touch down below. It won't do anything there. So what's happening here is the air is going to blow down through here, go on straight, take it all out of there, but it's not gonna do anything for here. Now this, as I say, is a clear airway down here. So what you could do is then build up the pressure. Once you've drained everything else off, build up uh, the pressure one last time. And what you could then do is the part that we're forgetting, bring that valve in the downward position because when you build up pressure one more time, there is lots of lovely pressure built up in here. And when you turn the diversion valve, down to the tank, I think you get the point by now, what it's going to do is backflow back through here and shoot this water either back into the tank, okay, which will drain, or actually just take it straight to the dump valve, which is there as well. So this is actually the best place to do that, uh, to fit this part. Okay, so we know we want to fit to the end of this line here, so I'm just going to disconnect it here, okay, and then I've got to reach right in here and disconnect it from the wall coming through. So that takes that pipe out. Now, just to show you, we already have a straight end here so that there's a spigot on, on the end of the socket that comes in from the wall. So we want to fit the T on. So we just simply take that off, set it to one side. And then what we do is we fit in. Again, it's a 12 millimeter connection there. And as I say, if it's the flexible pipe work, you'd want to put the barb in there first of all. Remember to dip the pipe into uh, some boiling water. Um, it'll just make that job a lot easier for you and it'll be a better fit, it'll grip um, better onto the flexible pipe. So the next thing we want to do is just push that straight through again. And I hope you can get that on the camera, but get it straight through, push it nice and tight. There you go onto the end and indeed this end here goes back on. Very straightforward. So a complicated system can actually be quite simple. Like I say, there may be times whenever you just need to extend some of the pipework just to maybe move it around the corner here, which would make life a bit easier. But it's just having a study at your system, first of all, and you may find that it's actually quite straightforward. When we want to do a drain down, at this point, as you can see here, this diversion switch, 
what we'd want to do is of course when we're draining down connect on the flow make sure that that is coming straight through this pipe now this will be kind of normal for this particular customer's caravan because what it will he normally uses the water coming from the outside barrel and so that diversion switch will normally sit in that way once you blow all the water through go back to this and i'll show you it later on in the drain down what you want to do is build uh, let the flow build the pressure back up one last time and then change the direction You've only got a little bit of pressure in this pipe, but you've got lots of nice pressure and lots of compressed air in the rest of the system. Once you turn that valve, it will shoot back in this direction. And like I say, what you can do is actually open the dump valve down below or shoot the water back into the tank and let it drain itself whenever you're draining that tank off. For me, it would be lift the dump valve uh, and drain the water but basically back out of this pipe. This means that this pipe is clear for winter, this pipe is clear for winter, and both pipes are clear for during the summer season as well so that no water can get off and you're coming right from the very source of the water. Okay, that's it fitted. And that's the end of the troubleshooting section and hopefully that covers a few little issues in there. This list is not exhaustive and we will come across other issues as time goes on and hopefully we'll get those up onto the website where you can view them at the address shown. In there you'll also be able to find contact details, email addresses and telephone numbers to come through to our technical support department if you need us.